I'm Mr. Richie. And we are the, the educators. And we are back. It is July 23rd, 2020. It is a Thursday. We are not in the same room. Hold on. Not anymore. Uh, oh, no, no, not touching yeah, anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should, I felt like just timed it right, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could have done that. Like, oh, so what is that? It is yeah. season two, episode six. And what is happening in the news? A lot of things going on still. Lots of stuff going on. Well, yeah, I'm coming to you live from a room that's about a uh, hundred degrees. And. Yes. and <laughs> I don't mind a cat climbing up on, on the <laughs> desk as I talk. Uh, other than that, um, so yeah, it's pretty hot out here right now. But um, in the world, well, the one big thing to keep talking about is, of course, COVID-19. Mm. Um, right now, we are in the countdown um, to schools opening. So, of course, uh, everyone's talking about school safety, um, how we're going to reintroduce kids to school, and... We're doing that while in the world there are 15.3 million cases, mm -hmm. 626,000 deaths, and 8 million recovered. So um, almost half as many recovered as live um, like active cases. Mm -hmm. But here in the USA, which I thought that was interesting, so it's about half, right? So 15 million cases total, 8 million recovered means, you know, roughly 7, 8 million that uh, have it currently. Well, here in America, 4.1 million cases confirmed, 1.2 million recovered, which means that currently there's almost three times as many people with the virus currently as have gotten over, which is different than the rest of the world. So these stats really, it's very interesting. I, I, I knew I was gonna be looking forward to the data. I do love data. And um, unfortunately, here in the, in the United States, we are up 246,000 deaths. Um, they keep adding up so quickly every week yeah. that we talk about it. And I hate to talk about it, but I mean, this is this is what our life is right now. And here it in is, Maine, um, yeah, I heard Maine and New Hampshire. They said they're the only ones that with it with it staying low. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, that's. Just I don't know how we're doing that, but you know, it's 50-50 when I leave the house here, except for certain stores. I go to now. I've narrowed it down to like. I only go to like one actual store to buy food right now. And it's, it's that specific one because when I go in there, everybody, like they don't yeah, let people really, in. Really, they take care of the mask. Stuff, yeah. 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 And so therefore, you know, I give them my business a hundred percent. Um, I've been trying to <laughs> go to a couple other places just for some projects around. And it's just like, I feel like I'm walking into people that just don't even understand. I went to the post office out of necessity mm -hmm. and people standing at the doorway, talking and it was just like i walk up with my masks no masks on with them and it's like i don't want to walk through you you know not even on a normal day would i you know yeah walk yeah. in between two people talking but here in this time still they were just it was like as if the world wasn't going through I this i feel right like now. yeah they've really let up here that people don't really care much anymore and it's this uh issue where we're where they're watching the rest of the world and if anyone says to anybody hey you guys are doing great maine's doing great yeah great that means we can uh, relax and not have to do much but yeah <laughs> it's i mean it's not like those people that vacation land hey yeah. let's go take a vacation to maine we don't have to quarantine anymore great yeah to come up here and it's just that one little thing that could spread it and all of a sudden it's back and it's horrible and what we so, have potential plans for opening our school year is not going to happen all of a sudden. Yeah, right now would be the worst time for like an influx. But like, yeah. so my wife, wa uh, we had plans to go to Old Orchard Beach, which is in Maine. Um, we, we do that once a year. It's kind of like just something that we love that place. Usually Mainers aren't huge fans of Old Orchard Beach, but yeah. like, you know, Old Orchard Beach is definitely just lots of tourists and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's so nostalgic for us that it's just sort of what we do in the summer. Yeah. And so, um, my wife go, went there uh, or looked on this uh, website that was like just Old Orchard Beach, um, people talking about, you know, tourists, stuff like that. And they were almost advertising like, yeah, no one's really enforcing masks. Do oh, yeah. Show up, you know, it's, it's and um, want, four, good. 14 day quarantine. is It's voluntary. It's, you know, and everybody would just, and so it's alarming. But yeah, because I mean, here in Maine, we got you know, 3,700 cases. 
only 118 deaths, which is good. I think that um, the the curve, if you look at the graph on deaths, mm -hmm. you know, it hit us hard at the beginning. And like we kind of figured out what works, what doesn't, and the curve is kind of showing you know, a learning curve, like that we're adapting. But uh, so you know that's that's where we're at right now. But you know there are definitely some things I'd like to talk about that are, have nothing to do with the virus uh, in yeah. general. And one of them is is space. And so I just wanted to mention this this one topic that I've been waiting to talk about for a while. I actually wanted to talk about this when it was more relevant, and yeah. I'm glad I didn't because of what the end of the story is but uh so uh, what i want to talk about is beetlejuice and beetlejuice don't is the name don't say it <laughs> don't say it. yeah <laughs> beetlejuice oh no uh no uh so beetlejuice spelled very differently uh, of course than the movie um is a star and actually that's Beetle where Beetle Dice, some people might say right yeah 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 and i'm just we, i've known it as Beetlejuice just because that's what it looks like to me yeah. but um so Beetlejuice is a very famous star and actually in the movie Beetlejuice by the way when they're looking up the advertisement for Beetlejuice Beetlejuice's services it's spelled out as Beetlejuice or yeah. as the star was called so um so if you look at Orion so Orion is one of the most prominent yeah. um stand constellations up. constellations uh, in this yeah. yeah exactly yeah Ryan's yeah, um, Ryan's belt is famous. It's got a really awesome nebula to check out if you have like a really good telescope um, and like long exposure photography. Um, but so Betelgeuse's right shoulder, I mean, uh, Orion's right shoulder is Betelgeuse. And Betelgeuse is a very peculiar star because it is a like a red giant. And mm -hmm. we've known that it's at the tail end of its life. But the tail end of a star's life is still millions and millions of years long. You know, their deathbed is millions of years long. So it's, you never know what's going to happen. But um, so it, it's a couple of months ago, we thought that we were going to be on the verge of a supernova. And like Betelgeuse is so big that when it dies, it's going to go not just nova, but supernova. It is going to be, it is going to light up the night sky and be as bright as the moon is a uh, full moon. But it's going to be so bright, you'll be able to see it during the day. Just this exploding star. And it usually will probably stick around for weeks, months. It uh, depends on the star. Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen very many of them explode like that around here. Um, so it's only 500 uh, million light years away, too. Um, I mean, the light is from that. 500 light, light years. And, and so it's actually a pretty close star compared to... Yeah, and that, the question is, so it takes eight minutes for, for, for the light from the sun to get to us. Yeah. Our own sun our own star, yeah. and how long would it take from Betelgeuse to get to the light that we see from that? Thinking about 500 that. years. So yeah. what yeah. we are seeing, what it looks like now in the 1500s, like when, when it was alive in the 1500s, or I, I stay alive, but you know, burning or so that's, that's doing crazy. what stars do, <laughs> um, going nuclear. Um, so the reason why I was so involved in this story was because of how cool it would be to see a star explode. Yeah. I mean, we are so disconnected from the stars and from astronomy in general that like, if all of a sudden a star exploded, every kid, every adult in the world would have to consider that stars have a life cycle. And which yeah. I think is sort of like a, it's a, a rite of passage when you get to a certain level of knowledge about the universe, when you realize literally everything is temporary, including yeah. stars and our own sun itself. Yeah. And so the, you know, it's sort of like that situation where you put yourself into a weird situation because you're better off in the end of it, having gone through this situation. If we all had to consider the universe as it is, I think it would be better as, as people in general, I think. You know, if, if we all knew that stars could die and blow up like that. But all of a sudden, um, the star dimmed uh, a few months ago. That's why we thought it was going to blow up. I mean, we knew it was at the tail end of its life. Mm -hmm. Then it dimmed. So it's like, oh, oh, there it is oh, right it there, right? Yeah. Here it comes, yeah. And it dimmed quick. I think it was like a third as bright as it mm. was. And for a massive star, a brightness difference of that, could indicate some crazy stuff happening. So then all of a sudden, a couple weeks later, 
it just brightened back up to its normal right back to where it was before. It was like a hiccup that just dissipated and it went back on its merry way. And so at first everybody was like, what happened here? We thought this thing was, was going to blow up. You know, we didn't know it was going to blow up today. You know, it could be a hundred years, a million years. Um, but we thought that we were seeing the beginnings of this and no, like at first we were like, we think it was just a dust cloud. Like yeah. some interstellar dust got in the way. That's yeah. Um, I was thinking about that. Something gets in the way. I'm like, yeah, because yeah, it's 500 million light years away. A simple, uh, you know, a, a, a dust cloud gets in the way, and it's called extinction when the light from a an object behind the dust cloud gets absorbed. You know, the energy is absorbed by this black cold dust. You know, um, and it takes away from the visibility. It's something that we've observed thousands of times in other stars. I mean, this is really big science. I mean, 500 million, uh, 500 light years away is nothing really with the, what we can observe. We actually have genuine pictures of Betelgeuse. Like you can see the dimming, you can actually see the sphere. It's, it's pretty interesting. Hmm. But then all of a sudden it turned out that what it was um, after lots of analysis, you know, a couple months of analysis, uh, it was sunspots. Just hmm. like our sun has these sunspots these magnetic storms on the sun that just they dim the sun's overall output um but doesn't take away from its life cycle or anything like that and so that's it it just hiccuped had a little thing and it's gone and i just thought it served as such a great example of how no matter how much we want something to happen even though we've been planning for beetlejuice to be like blown up for almost 100 years now since we've had like physics, heliophysics and, yeah. and solar physics and stuff. We've, we've known that Betelgeuse is at the tail end of its life. And we've been wanting to observe a supernova so bad. And yet here we are, it was a dust cloud or maybe some sunspots. And so um, it just goes to show that we're bound by universal laws that are greater than ourselves. And when we observe the, our environment and work within our constraints, that's when we can achieve the most because if we just are blinded by our own wants, what we want in the universe, the universe will sort of wake us up eventually and just say, yeah, it's not really the way you thought it was going to work. Or like, I'm not going to do that yet. Yeah, I'm not. No, yeah, I'm going to take my own time. We want this to be right. We're hoping it's going to be right. I mean, I think we do that with science all the time. It's just, especially, you know, we want to live longer. Please have there be medicine. Please have there be Oh, medicine. I know. And every, we all want quick science, but that's the thing. We jumped to quick science during the Beetlejuice story and every science publisher out there was publishing Beetlejuice is going to explode or it's going to explode. Um, we, we all rush to it and this is what happens when you rush science. It's just something you can't do. And the same thing with um, COVID-19, just unfortunately to bring that back, yeah. the whole wear a mask, don't wear a mask. No, wearing a mask is good. Everyone should wear a mask. You know, the whole messaging, rushing into science, it can't be done. We want it to be done like that. We want it all to be right. Though. Tough call, you know, whether you... Uh, everything to be... Uh kind of to go the way plans. I mean, it, right. how many movies have people watched where there's a, there's a great happy ending and everything seems to be wrapped up and you're like, great, I'm sure everything's going to go perfect from now on. They got what they wanted. Good things happen. Happenstance stuff that, that would never happen just seems to happen at the right time. It's, it's, it's karma. It's whatever you want to say it is. It's destiny. It should happen this way. Good rules over evil. We've, put things into categories of good and evil. Star doesn't blow up. That's not good. That's evil. Star blows up. That's good. I guess. Maybe. Probably not so good. Depends on your perspective. No, around here, it's fine for us. It's, it's something to do. It's something to look at. So that's good. Yeah. But yeah. But it's like, there's certain things Unfortunate like for the planets. You know, there are planets orbiting Betelgeuse and, you know, we know nothing about them, you know, and but they could, yeah, uh, they're gone. <laughs> something with life. Imagine, you know, living we're living there and it's our sun that's yeah. going to explode. And it's like, I don't know about that. Like, uh, what's going on? <laughs> we need to, we need to get out of here. It's like that. Well, nobody's wearing masks. So <laughs> we got to get over. Hope the coronavirus hasn't spread that far. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just hoping that, that simple things like a, a people staying alive for the fact that they have bigger projects to work on. We have oh. bigger things as a civilization to tackle. And, and the first on my list is humans living indefinitely, getting rid of aging, curing aging, so we don't have to go through that. And then 
becoming a type one civilization so we can work our way up and basically get into our solar system, eventually get into our universe, you know? Yep. And, and we've, got, we've got to plant seeds on other places yeah. because there is a, like I was telling, our star, our planet itself has a life cycle and there is death at the end of every life cycle. So it's something that we've got to consider. And um, for ourselves, if, like you mentioned, I mean, if we put all the, these years of research into our brains just to let them, you know, disappear after 85 years or so, you know, it's like such a, such a loss. It's, it's a waste and, you know, speaking of which. How you could basically get your information out. How yeah. can you, be the best way you can get your information out and, and, mm -hmm. and distill everything you've learned and that you can teach, what format can you do that with that you think is most effective? I mean, is there anything? We've seen books from famous scientists for many, 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 many years. We've seen videos now from scientists that, that have since passed. We hear their papers, we see their papers, we see other mm -hmm. people that have worked with them talking in these different formats and stuff like that. And yet, we read it, you, you kind of understand it, but not exactly the, the way they want you, the depth. And then what you've skimmed is your take on it, and you might run with it a little bit, but it's never to the extent that they wanted it to be done. Right, it's right. Not Unless the you're exact way, yeah. It'd be great to have like, um, you know, Robert Goddard, Goddard the um, father of, of rocket science. You know, to have, to see him and lie, talk to him, ask questions. You know, like or Warner uh, von, von Braun. You know, and. Um, talk to these guys and get information from them specifically because you read their book. It's like it's I could easily blank out on a part that they really wanted me to know for sure. You I mean, know, downloading um, someone's brain, which were that's another yeah. Thing that, uh, trans we talked about that brain. previously. Um, I'm sure we're going to bring it up again. So if you're hearing just this is your first one, oh yeah, we talk about all kinds of stuff here, uh, including uh, downloading your brain into a computer, which sounds crazy but honestly if right now you think downloading your brain into a computer sounds crazy you should know that there's like at least 20 or so companies working on doing just that yeah. and other things so um you know this is this is current events right now it's like those that don't that won't realize it's happening are the ones that won't be downloaded and hey that no one to remember you unfortunately if it's gonna if it's gonna get like that it, the fact that you brought up that there's a star a giant something how much bigger than our sun? Oh, how much bigger I, than our I sun? wish I knew. I wish I knew offhand. It's it's enormous. Yeah, um, I'll have to look that up. But yeah, <laughs> but but that much bigger, huge thing that is going to be exploding in in our universe, and going through its life, and that the world is constantly changing like that. Like, yeah, I say world. I'm generally meaning universe. The world is changing like this all the time. For those that will deny, well, everything's going to stay the same. The out, I look outside, I see the stars. It's basically like someone putting wallpaper up. It's going to stay the same like that. No, no, everything's changing. Everything is moving. Things are moving away. All those from stars us. are moving. Yeah, it's, yeah. And uh, we should be moving. We should be moving it, it, our lives on. Our our adapting to this, the fact that we're on a rock floating in the middle of nothing, mm -hmm. in a vacuum of space. It just I don't know why anyone's not crazy and like, I need, to, what is going on? We, this needs to, something needs to happen. We need to do something with this. Yeah. There's a lot of people doing that. If you're not doing that, they're not going to just be like, lend a hand out to you. It's busy. They're busy. They are very busy. You know, we're going to be talking later, another, another episode about citizen science and how can you be involved in anything like this? I want to get mm -hmm. involved in it. I want, I want our names on the radar. When it comes time for though, who, who's interested in this? We're, we're, we're willing to let some, a few people in that aren't really savvy with the science, but they're, that are really interested in kind of promoting us. Like, hey, I'll wear the t-shirt, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll promote it. I'll promote it. Yep. Please, please. I want, I want to, I want to carry on. I want to really help people. I want to keep going. Absolutely. Thousands, thousands of years, please. Let me do it. Absolutely. Well, I, I I'm agree. Good. I'm good. Yep. I'll, I'll be an educator for the rest of my life. And I'd like my, life to be extended yeah. and uh so yeah i absolutely agree but uh so i had to look it up yeah. um Be betelgeuse a star that is 887 times the diameter 
of our sun and has the mass of 11.6 suns. Wow. So, and the sun is 99% of our entire solar system, all of the star, uh, planets yeah. added together, you know. And so this massive thing that can't even affect us is changing all the way over there. Meanwhile, all the other stars are changing. Isn't the sun Everything like changes. 30, 30 Earth sizes, 30 times the size of the Earth, or 300? Uh, one million Earths could fit inside the volume. So the like, sun, our it, sun. So yeah, the diameter of it, I think it's like 101 times the diameter, but like the, the volume would fit one million Earths, wow. give or take, inside of it. It's just this, it's... Uh, and I love this because uh, this this previous year I got to do the, a, I kind of went off on a tangent, but um, we were building shelters with the first graders. Mm -hmm. And so I got to um, give them just tons of materials and they got to build and it was messy and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. But part of it was, okay, why do we need shelter? What do humans need? We need, we need um, protection from the elements, warmth, yep. food, water, you know, basic, you know, things. And also, it's kind of a, an idea, you know, if you get lost, what's one of the first thing you need? A shelter. Well, during shelter, one of the, the storybook that I read to them was a dog that needed respite from the sun. Like, it needed a shelter somehow. Yeah. Didn't have a dog house. So these kids figure out how to build it. Well, in that, um, I got to tell this, I, you know, five different groups of 20 plus first graders. And I drew on my big whiteboard. I just drew this giant circle. I didn't tell them what I was talking about. I just said, and then afterwards I said, this is the sun. And they said, okay, sure, that's the sun. And I just took a blue little marker and put one little dot. You know, like I, I had it measured out. Like I, I had, a, had it all pretty much to scale. And after you do it a couple of times, you just get used to it. But I put a dot, you know, a little circle, one centimeter. That's the size of the earth. And just to, even in first grade, just to see the minds, like, like, what? Like, oh, my God. Like, I just loved it. It was one of my favorite things from this, this past year, just the size immensity of, of, of things. And it makes – and one of the reasons why I do that is to show that we aren't the center of the universe. Yeah. Earth isn't the center of the universe. The sun isn't even the center of the universe. There really is no center of the universe, but I don't want to get too technical. But, yeah. like, there's always other things going on. We are a part of this. we got to work with it. And I think that um, to get back on our uh, track, what we're going to talk about, yeah. one of the things that we got to do in order to work with nature is in our own bodies. Like some of us want to uh, live different lives. I, I'm not the type that wants to have these giant protruding muscles or anything, yeah. but those, there are these people that force their bodies to do certain things. Out of and entropy. In, yeah. in, into entropy, basically out of uh, equilibrium or... Yes, out of... Yes and actually can create their own demise sooner um, than if they were actually healthy. So it's yeah. working with nature, understanding that there are things, constraints that are out of our control that we have to work with. And I um, wanted to segue into this, this next part about where we actually yeah. talk about some health and wellness. And before that, we're gonna take a quick break uh, for our sponsor, which is probably gonna be Anchor. <laughs> so we'll be right, right back. I'm Mr. James. And I'm Mr. Richie. And, and we, we are, are the educators. educators. We use Anchor.fm to host our podcast. It's the most important tool to get our message out, and it's free. Anchor.fm gives you a full dashboard of options, and most importantly, they do the hard work for you by dispersing your podcast out to different hosts, like Spotify, Apple, and many more. So if you're planning on making your own podcast, making some money from your podcast, we wouldn't recommend you start anywhere else. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And get your voice heard today. Yep. And we're back. Yes. All right. So last week we started the first of, I hope it's going to be a three-part series uh, about health and wellness. Uh, and I mentioned last week we kind of talked about motivation and preventative health care. So definitely something, and this is, I think has been quite a bit like newsworthy for the past five to 10 years where they talk about preventative healthcare because of the healthcare system having so many 
people in it and it's it's been something that we've needed to talk about for a lot longer but yeah, yeah you're right you know, <laughs> something like, listen it's... we have a problem with diabetes in, in this country heart disease uh cancer all this stuff things and a lot of things that they said besides genetics that people can be susceptible to if they don't take care of themselves so why don't they prevent things from happening i know us working at a school we have an incentive to, to kind of log in and, and say we've been walking i've been exercising you basically get some money points you can earn if you plug in numbers and such and get screenings and such some prizes so get, and, yeah prizes yeah. it's just an incentive they're like hey preventative yeah. health care we'd rather have you we'd rather give you money pay you a little bit and have you do this sort of like gamification of taking care of yourself than see you after years of abuse and give you like a uh you know, a, a horrible diagnosis and basically give you right. a few years to live and stuff and, 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 and how much that's going to tax the system because the numbers, the money that it costs to go through some of these things and especially, oh God, it's you know, insane. what you'll spend, but what, what, what it takes them to treat somebody and it's, it's horrible. So my wife is in the insurance, like navigation mm -hmm. business. Like she doesn't work for insurer. She navigates insurance because it's so difficult to navigate insurance, you have people that do that. Like that's, I mean, that just says something about our healthcare system it's already. It's horrible. So we did talk about misconceptions of health last week. Uh, I, and like you mentioned earlier, someone who has overly large muscles, someone who's working with that or athletic performance to like a certain degree that is trying to break records, even like excessively clear skin. That's almost like, you know, it doesn't seem human, like a body. And, and what we talk about is it's like a body being out of balance. And you're always in like this homeostasis. Your body's trying to become in this homeostasis. So, and you're setting it out with what you're eating and the nutrients you're getting. And did you sleep well enough? Oh no, it's this certain time of the day, your 3, 3 p.m. slump, your circadian rhythm. It's making you tired because you're producing something from hormones. And it's just... That's the whole thing. Your body is constantly regulating all these things and you're taking it out of regulate. You're taking it out of that. And whenever your body exemplifies something that is like excessive, it's you personally taking your body out of that. And some people take it to such a degree that it really, it, it, their body fails at take, taking them back to where it should be. And there could be a lot of problems with that. So this episode is going to be about whole foods or at least food and supplements. I mentioned whole foods because we always talk about whole foods, right? Whole foods, eat whole foods, which is unprocessed food, fruits, vegetables. Not, yeah, we're not nuts. talking about the brand name, yeah. not the brand name whole foods. Yeah, no. like, it's so weird to have to <laughs> clarify. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's name ourselves whole foods so we can people can come in here <laughs> and still get our our 360 degree products that are processed like crackers and stuff. I went to Whole Foods, got their Whole Food crackers that aren't Whole Foods. Yeah, but we're talking about fruits, <laughs> vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes, things that are in nature. They're from the ground and such. I'm mentioning these. I'm mentioning more of the plant-based things. Uh, we're going to go into another time about talking about meat and such. And I, I really want to, because I want to devote more of it to good that. Yeah, that'd be a good thing to take up. Comparing like that to what what Whole Foods would be, but you want to give sure. your body something it can use uh, readily, something your body should know how to use, and Whole Foods are the best way. In fact, everything that we have basically to eat is by way of Whole Foods. So we process foods. If you want to think in, in terms of this, are food that take from Whole Foods and remove the things that you need, like fiber, things that you get from Whole Foods that aren't the flavor and such that you're looking for or the color. You know, that's basically where like, oh, we like the flavor of this. We don't need the fiber. We don't need the other, the other nutrients, the nutrients that we really need. We just, we want that taste and put it in some ice cream we're making or a cracker or something like that. And they reconstruct food elements based upon taste. So you could get a cracker that has, you know, some grains in it and a cracker has some onions in it, you know, and it has some nuts or seeds or something and they put it all together. Now they've had to take things away from each of those 
to basically make into a cracker. And then they're worried about calorie content. So they're like, well, the nuts and seeds have a lot of fat. We're going to get rid of that. And you're basically getting a food that everything has been changed to get into it based upon what the finished product tastes like. And this is a marketing thing. So when people have, yep. should be thinking about processed food as a marketing, it's being marketed to them as this way, like, oh, this tastes this, this way. And, and the funny thing I, like, I, I think is, is really uh, interesting about it is the fact that on the bag, it shows all the natural foods as if yeah. someone just threw them up in the air, <laughs> they landed and they smashed them together and boom, there came that cracker. That's right. Oh, the yeah. <laughs> away from that. If you, if you get rid of certain things, it doesn't, it doesn't turn into something as, as good as you think it is. You get rid of certain things, you process things to an unnatural level. So how do we and taste? Like right. Well, you need to develop a taste for whole foods so that, and after you do that, all of a sudden the other processed stuff stops tasting so good. Like yeah. if you learn to adapt and I, I'm on the, I'm on the way, you're a little yeah. farther along than I am, but I'm on the way. But yeah, so uh, all all based on taste. What? But there's nothing better, really. Yeah. Than, no. Like these yeah. whole foods. I mean, I'll go. We just picked up blueberries off our bush out, out front. Like that's there's nothing better. You're than like that. this doesn't taste like uh, blueberry. This blueberry cereal that's been yeah uh, blueberry pop tarts. This does not taste like blueberry pop tarts. Yeah. This is, this is blueberry actual blueberry. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's and it's it's kind of how we taste. We have five ways we taste: sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and then this other one which. They call it umami, which is sort of this savory, savory sort of way to taste things. I mean, I'm told it was like earthy, yeah. but like it's so broad, hard to explain. Salty about. and sweet seem to be uh, went out in the food world, and it's our brain's way it equates with calories. So fruit, sweet, great. Fruit needs to be sweet. Fruit, trees, let's make something that's sweet so that if something's going to eat it, and the seed will find a way into the ground and we can make another version of ourselves. Our brains like sweet, sugars. I run on sugars, great, I wanna eat that. The same way with salty, you see animals in nature, you know, there's really no salt around there. You put a, you know, for deer, they have like a salt lick and everyone, they're like, wow, why do they like salt so much? If you ate, you know, vegetation off the, off of the floor of the, uh, you know, in, in the wilderness and stuff like that, you're going to want something salty too. You're going to want that to balance out. And salt just gives that thing because it's these electrolytes we need. And sodium is right. one of those electrolytes we need. And it's our brains. It's our way to survive like that. But we get addicted to that response of being mm -hmm. satiated. And then processed foods take those flavors to like an unnatural level. And I compare it all the time when I'm talking about this to uh, orange juice. A lot of people don't know this. You go buy orange juice in the store. You could buy the stuff that says fresh squeezed or whatever. It is not natural. They take, they can take orange that it, oranges that have been squeezed, but there's a company that makes the natural orange juice flavoring that is put into it. Because if you take an orange or a number of oranges, you squeeze them yeah. and you put them in a bottle and you put them in your refrigerator Come the next day, you try it, it's going to be taste watered down. The sugar is going to kind of go away. The sugary taste is going to go away. And yeah, yeah. They absolutely. want that sweetness. You want that, like, wow, this tastes so fresh. Scientists have worked on that, food scientists, to make that sweetness. So yep. it's fake. It's just, that's one of the things that even the fresh squeeze, whatever, Tropicana, Florida, whatever you get, it's, it's not natural to our body. And, but it's that, we have that idea. We want to be satiated. We wanted that. I need that. That what that tastes right to me. So right. it's unnatural. Right, that's, that's not what we need, though. Yeah, and it, it it mentally strains you because your brain always wants the bigger hit of satisfaction. So what does your body need when it comes to food? We need macronutrients first and foremost, and these are the larger nutrients: protein, carbohydrates, fats. We're thinking protein is, you know, what, what makes muscle and such. Carbohydrates, where you get your energy from. You know, we have the starchy carbohydrates, the more fibrous carbohydrates. And fats, fats don't make you fat, but you need fat in your body. 
uh, and fats are just these lipids. Basically, your body helps. And fats are every the cell. Calories. Yeah. Every cell is surrounded by a lipid bilayer. Fat is and, and funny because fat is one of those sweet, salty, and fat are the ones that basically pull everybody in. Yep. Fat is another thing your brain tells you. This is a lot of calories. You need it. You need to survive. You need to eat this. Sugars that are like instant gratification. Ooh, candy. Sugar. Sugar is giving me energy. I need energy. That's one of those things. Salt. Great. Salt is giving me some electrolytes. I need that sort of balance, you know, sodium, potassium levels in my body. So, but that's the thing. It's, I would add fiber to my list of macronutrients because it basically pushes everything through your body and helps the microbes and in your body, your microbiome, which in 2014, uh, uh, many scientists have uh, basically stated that there's 10 times as many microbial bacterial cells in your body than human cells. You are made up of more than just yourself. You are actually more something else than human. You're a host to that sort of thing. So you need all these macros in varying amounts in each meal. I don't want to get into how the split is, like what do you need for each one? Because guess what? It, it almost, it almost kind of doesn't really matter. You don't want to eat too much of any one thing. You generally have more mm -hmm. carbohydrates, the least amount of fat and middle amount of protein. But, you know, the 30% protein, 20% fat, 50% carbohydrate with hopefully fiber rich carbohydrates because carbohydrates are the ones that will have the fiber attached to them. That is just an, an estimate that, that people have used for, for years, but only some people. And there's so many arguments online about what, if you're athletic, if you're this, that, you know, if this has this to your health, you're in some sort of diet, varying body types, activity levels, metabolism, you know, it gets into crazy things. And I actually have to rant on this. So <laughs> I get a rant on this. All right. I'm putting up the timer. I'm actually looking at my watch and two minutes on the clock. Two minutes, two minutes. Probably can't <laughs> even see that, but it's right there. Two minutes and go everyone with different diets, diets. I go on this diet on this, you know, I'm personally, personally, I'm plant-based, completely plant-based. I've been like that for a year and a half and five years prior to that, I've been like getting to that level and stuff like that. People can call it, you're vegan and stuff like that. Yes. Vegan also has to do with a culture and like a movement and such like that. I don't want to get into that in this episode, but this whole thing of diets, paleo diet, I'm a South Beach diet, I'm this and that. And what it is, is taking is kind of this whole thing with macronutrients where I'm throwing one thing up in the air. I'm doing more fiber in this one. I'm doing more protein in this one. Uh, we're doing more fats and our fats are from olive oil. Our fats are from avocado or whatever seed. It's something that gets, it's more concentrated. And this is the way we live longer. And this is better for you. And, and, and usually it comes along with this idea of this chiseled body right? It's this, we're going to sell this on this chisel body. If you eat just like this, this is how people in this part of the world eat. This is basically the way to do this. No, people should eat raw meat. Some people are saying that. Be a carnivore, even though you don't have the things in your body, the enzymes to break it down like actual carnivores do. And your teeth, eh, even these insides right there, it's not meant for tearing flesh. Have you seen the ones on actual like large cats? Yeah, they can tear flesh. They, they're the ones that can do that. We can't do that. We have long intestines. We can't digest food like, like they can. We don't have we, have, we have one stomach. We don't have multiple chamber stomachs. We can't eat grass off the ground. <laughs> yeah. So many different diets that people come up with, and they just don't have a lot of sense for what actually works. They didn't look be, the, to figure out like the science behind this, the fact that your body is going to be, is just, it's not going to work for the way you are. I mean, the first thing I try to do, uh, is look at my skinny wrists and be like, hey, it's a good thing I'm a musician and I'm not trying to be a wrestler and, and breaking my wrist every single second or playing football. It's just not going to work. And I just think people need to think more of these diet things and get off these fads. And time. Wow. Nice. Nice. So, along like with macronutrients, we've got micronutrients. And these are the vitamins and minerals. So there's 13 essential vitamins your body needs. A, C, D, E, K, and the B vitamins, uh, B1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, and B12. Don't ask me about B4 and B8 and, and 10, 11. I don't believe those maybe actually exist. I don't know how exactly they came up with these sort of things, but uh, there's four fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, two of which your body makes. Your body does make vitamin D, 
and your body makes vitamin K. And vitamin K is made in the liver and vitamin D. Go outside, right? The sunshine vitamin they talk about. Right, right. Of course, I believe a lot of people are deficient in this vitamin. Uh, and yeah, and that's one of the things you could be taking that year round just to kind of like. And I am. Take care of that. <laughs> and, that and that gets us into supplements. So whole right. foods should give you everything you need. Whole foods should give you everything. But supplements give you this concentrated vitamin, mineral, or food element with some intended result. But the belief in supplements, you have to take everything with a grain of salt, right? Because it's not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, right? So they can't be like, no, no, that's not, that's wrong. They can make any claims they want. Nothing is a one size fits all. Like if you need this percentage of this vitamin, if it's a vitamin, or you need these herbs mixed together because people in this country take this, we've kind of worked this out. This is the best way to do it, even though, you know, it's probably them saving money using cheap ingredients and stuff like that, which is generally the case with supplements, which is unfortunate. But like I said, there's no regulation. There's no one policing that. Uh, the science is skewed all the time. We, I don't know where they get some of their numbers. It's not like they have a lot of watchdogs looking on them. Now, in right. the past 10 years, companies have had third parties come in and test their things for like metals, heavy metals and such, which is great. I like, so we'll have to do a whole episode someday on supplement industry oh, yeah. because we it's could go on too long about that. Horrible. And there's mm -hmm. no universal data use. It's like everyone yeah. has their own cherry pick data. We know cherry picking things like, I like what that fact looks like. I'm going to take that. Just not a good mm -hmm. thing. Concentrates are not natural. You don't know your body as it is normally. You don't, you don't take a daily blood, blood pressure, your pulse, uh, take, take your blood out and have someone measured, take an EKG or get metabolic testing every single day. You don't really know what shape your body is in, in day to day. You don't know what it is. It's constantly reacting to what you do with it. Your eating schedule, what you're eating. So it's having a supplement thinking that, you know, I think I need this vitamin or I needed this specific herb. It's a guessing game and everything has adverse effects. And admitting that is a big part of this thing. Like a lot of people just think, well, my gut tells me I need this supplement. Yeah. Don't always trust that. Like I, you got to trust the gut a little bit, but let's trust the science behind it. Yeah. Too. And that's, so big ones, I'm just going to quickly cover quick some quick, we're going to do, do some supplements all the time really quickly. Uh, protein supplements, you know, whey, soy, pea, hemp protein, casein, beef, egg, there's so many different protein powders. They've been out since people have been bodybuilding. Uh, and they came out in the late 60s, 70s. They started getting put powders. And people said, hey, you know, it's not as good as people, you know, in general say, hey, that's not as good as natural food. It isn't as good as food because food, whole foods come with other nutrients. And to try to concentrate just one part of something, whether by cooking it or whatever, you're taking out some things that are natural that your body probably can't use. Is it tested for allergens? Is it tested for heavy metals? That's a big thing that can happen. You don't want concentrates building up in your body, in your liver, your kidneys. You definitely don't want that sort of thing. How do you know? You know, varying <laughs> amounts of ingredients. It says it's 30% protein, 70% other. What, what's the other? And they don't really tell you that. They just said it's this much grams of protein per scoop. But when you try to look into it, you go, wait a minute. There's a lot of flavoring in this and gums and stuff to hold it together to make it thick when I shake it up. Am I really getting that much protein? And where's this protein coming from? If it's whey, it comes from milk. What type of, what, what milk is it coming from? Where the cow is grass fed? Where it can get to this whole thing. How was it processed? Where was it processed? It's this whole guessing game and it's a concentrated thing. So anything that was existed a little bit throughout it is going to be concentrated to a lot and they concentrate a lot of things and they make poisons they concentrate things they make cleaners the Some poison things. is in the dose they concentrate everything things. is a poison concentrate yeah. things that's horrible another one that's really common people are using now the lifting weights doing stuff called something called creatine that's been around a lot there's a lot of information on that it, it appears to be really safe but here's what it is it's basically something that puts you know water into the muscle so you need to drink a lot of water with it. It can have the adverse effect of making you want to urinate a lot. It can 
gets you really dehydrated if you don't drink enough water with it. And guess what? It's already made in your liver. So it's not like you're really need a supplement with that. Some people say, well, I just want that little bit of edge for something, but it's, it's probably more up here, right? They believe it to be true, whether it actually does something for you. The same thing with multivitamins. It's not really needed if, a, if your diet is in order. And when I say diet, it's not like a specific program that you follow to lose weight or whatever, gain weight. It's how you eat. If you've taken whole foods into you if, you, if you're if you're basically balancing your meals with your proteins, carbohydrates, fats, fiber, and getting them from different sources, eat the rainbow, all different colors. Rainbow. You don't need to worry about getting a multivitamin. Because guess what? Your body is going to take what it needs from that and get rid of what it doesn't. So if you take a multivitamin, you're probably going to get too much of a certain vitamin in your body. It's going to have some sort of adverse effects. Some of these vitamins, you don't want to get too many of them. You don't want to get too much. Vitamin A, vitamin E, you don't want to have problems with that. And besides from diarrhea, the stuff that can stick with you, the fat-soluble vitamins stay in your fat. It's just not a good thing to constantly be giving yourself a lethal, sort of like a toxic dose of that sort of thing. It's best to find out what you're not getting from your diet, and that would be a good blood test and other tests your doctors can take and stuff like that. And like I mentioned, it's probably going to be vitamin D or B12, maybe omega-3s, which is, you know, fatty acids that you can take that help with your brain and stuff like that and a lot of processes in your body. But you take those when you need to. So it's kind of like you, you, you eat a certain way, we have a lot of habits, and then finding out what you're missing based upon, you know, either by athletic performance or, or, or something, you, may, you might feel it, or being proactive and getting tested for things, which I think everyone should do. And I'm hoping eventually on everyone's wrist will be something that can take your blood and your pre blood pressure and everything like that and give you we can nutrients. Count, we can count on those watches a lot more than we can count on us being able to afford um, going in and getting these tests yeah. that could help us out because our healthcare industry is actually behind the tech that you can get in a watch at this yeah. point. It's, it's crazy. And, it's, and, and they, they might go overkill and give you something you absolutely don't need. Right? We're just going to put you in front of an x-ray and just do something. No, no, no. I don't, I don't need that sort of thing happening right now. I don't need right. that. And because they, they're going to go shoot for this thing that's going to be something they can at least do for you to maybe calm you down, right? To, we're going to do this. It's going to calm you down. You'll get that sort All of thing. right. There's other supplements too. I mean, and we're going to go on we're eventually another show. We're going to talk about this. But there's herbal and synthesized ones in labs to increase hormones athletic response, right? Fat burning, mental clarity. Uh, but what are the long-term effects of these? I mean, there's not, like we mentioned last time, some of the bigger bodybuilders with the, the, the large muscles and the really vascular veins sticking out. You don't see a lot of them living to a ripe old age. Uh, and there's a lot of problems. I mean, you have to use these things very sparingly or basically you don't use them at all because like you mentioned before, if you don't know how to use a multivitamin, how are you going to be able to use something else? Right? So it's like, right. it's going to be like, I can't, okay, I, I, we're going to give, here, here's a driving simulator. All right, I'm going to, oh, you crashed it. I'm not going to let you have the keys to my car, okay? <laughs> yeah, there's no, if you keep crashing a simulator, that's, and we're not racing. It's not need for speed. This is just a slow simulator with no one on the road. <laughs> what is going on? And, and, and a personal note, there's someone who is, he is very close to me that has kidney failure currently uh, because of these other supplements. I don't want to go into it in detail, but he does want large muscles. He wants, you know, and he did take a few substances that have increased his muscle size, uh, but the payoff is he's lost his hair. He is, he's, he's swelling around his ankles and his kidneys. He's basically could basically face renal failure. Now yeah. he's not, he's so far, we don't know that he can, he can reverse that. And there's right. no supplement that he possibly could take. That's going to go in there and fix the problems that these other ones did. Cause these other ones are pretty, pretty strong things. And it, it's pretty shocking to your body. Your body can heal itself but not with everything. And so at some point, it shocks your body so much out of homeostasis that it just it can't come back to normal. And that's 
why are people dying of COVID-19? That's, that's why, basically. They, they're trying to, their body's trying to solve this, get me back to being healthy. And too many things are happening and it just can't stop itself. It's, it's engulfed in this, this storm of like preventative measures and stuff to fix you and it just, you can't survive. So he's probably going to have a long time. Yeah, because like if, if he's worked for years to do this, I mean, you know, you get the virus once, you get these little tiny viral particles inside of you, your body overreacts, freaks out. Well, if years and years of putting stuff into your body that it doesn't need, it's reacting and trying to get rid of that. Well, there's a toll that it has taken. That's, un, that's a really unfortunate to hear, but it's just a life learning lesson, I guess, you know, that. It is pretty interesting that like something I like to teach is, is there's a balance. There's yeah. a balance in everything. It doesn't matter what it is. You just can't go to one extreme or the other. If you want the biggest muscles in the world, you're not going to be the longest lived person in the world. It's just. And it's not, I mean, it's not even healthy as wise. And, you know, we're talking about this now. I'd love to talk about more about whole foods and such. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about that in, at a later time. But supplements some people that basically live off of supplements, even, even the mm. ones that they take parts of foods and they rework them. So now we have something that has more protein, almost no fat and, and no carbohydrates. And that's the way to do this specific diet that has no carbohydrates. It used to be called Atkins. Now mm. who knows? Yeah. they have one called paleo, but that has carbohydrates, but it's yeah from different sources, but it's that keto. Yeah. So that's one of those things where, yeah. It's, a, it's still, they're taking things out and they're thinking, we know more. We don't know about, you know, they don't know about all the substances in foods, but we're going to take what we think are the best things of it, of, of this one thing is protein. We're going to cook it, killing a bunch of other things and, 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 you know, rendering it kind of dead, useless. You know, we don't want dead food. We want kind of living food, food that was living at one point, uh, like plant-based living food. Um, and then we're going to give it to you in this whatever concoction that we put it in based on flavor. And then some people will live off of that. And it oh, yeah. creates such an imbalance that it's, it's horrible. And they might even have the, the body. Everyone's like, wow, look at that body. Look how the proportions, it looks, it's, it's, it's unnatural, but it looks so interesting and stuff like that. It's, it's not going to stay like that. It's, it's not going to stay like that if the person, you- and, it's not gonna say it's not healthy. They're not healthy at all. That's the problem. I, I hate people get looking into this stuff and, and, and wanting to be like, I want huge biceps. I want this. I want that. And they go about it an unhealthy way and they lose it in a, in a horrible way where they hit rock bottom and it could be losing their life, which could still happen. They could shorten their life anyways, but is it worth it for a few Instagram pictures? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's I, yeah. it's not worth it. You want to live no. as long as you possibly can, if not indefinitely. Yeah, I mean, and there's so like you've got people that will add supplements to their diet, change their diet, affect themselves in the negative. If you want to look at a, a more um, even another example, mm-hmm. albeit different, is ARFID uh, or avoidant restrictive food intake disorder, and like so people that eat one thing their entire life and just you look at the research behind it the 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 deterioration of their bodies over years you know uh the one i read recently was a 19 year old i think uh man in england um and he 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 only ate craft mac and cheese or or like one brand box macaroni and cheese it was the only thing that like texturally like that he thought was that he felt that his body wanted and he was ignoring the science like he he you know sometimes our bodies tell us some weird things man and, and one of them was like you need to eat the this box of macaroni and cheese and he ignored the rest of it and the kid went blind like he i mean i'm sure wow. it wasn't an overnight thing but like there was a, a like because of a specific vitamin deficiency over the course of these years eventually his body was just like we can't fix this we're, yeah i'm gonna we give up we can't make those vitamins yeah. we can't do that yeah we're gonna conserve see that. our funny. resources yeah. i didn't see that ad on the side of the craft macaroni and cheese box yeah <laughs> <laughs> try to live right. off us and it's i mean it, it's it's horrible because 
we know it's marketed yeah. because of, of, of flavors. Flavor, and you know that it's enhanced. The flavoring in those things is enhanced. It's enhanced because cheese so they can would not too. normally not be like that. And we, we had to, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's a powdered version anyways too, but it's, it's so many things that it's just, it's horrible. And I, and I feel like we've, we've shocked our taste buds. We've shocked our brains. We've shocked our bodies by what we put in them so much that anything that's natural it's more natural, more whole food, tastes unnatural to us. And as such, we, we just, we, we have this aversion, like we can't eat that anymore. We can't mm -hmm. eat this. We can't go, I can't do that. And it's only a matter of time before it just, it hits you and something happens. And I mean, I, I, I have digestive issues every now and then. I have some issues I've had to deal with. And I'm on a diet that most people say is like the future of like everyone's diet being plant-based. Uh, uh, living a vegan lifestyle, but at the same time, and you're doing it, and you're doing it. I just want to add, yeah, in the public school environment where you might get 15 minutes to, to wolf yeah. down a you know, you might get a clear 15 minutes, and that's actually helped break. me, it's helped me become a teacher, <laughs> yeah. you know, to, to do my job so I can actually the food that I've been able to eat, you know, having more fiber in it, having more nutrients in it. I have had, I could eat less and I could, I have more energy with more, with less, which is great because at the same time, I don't know, I don't want to spend all the time eating. The worst thing in the world is having a teacher eat in front of their students and being like, hold up, hold up on your, on your issues, your management or whatever I have to do. I have to eat. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do that. No, I, I would not catch me doing take, that either. Yeah. Just try to take a quick bite of something. Yeah. With, they don't see me. I was eating an apple. They start coming in. I try to get a couple bites, throw it back into the, in the trash. And then, yeah, not back into the trash, throw it in the trash. I didn't take it out of the trash. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I have tried to keep it on my desk. And then by the time I get back to it, it's all brown. And I'm like, yeah, it's oxidized enough. I mean, I shouldn't be touching it. Yeah, yeah. And anyways, now with germs in the air, it's going to be a whole different thing for food. Whole other ball game, man. I don't even fan, know. Basically. Oh, God, I didn't even think about that. Where am I going to eat? I don't want to go eat with others, but I don't know if I want to eat in my room. Now, I see 100 yeah. or we, we you, you and I, see uh, on average 125 students per day yeah. in our classrooms. And that's a lot of shared air. Mm -hmm. And all of that, it's not like it's all just sucked up into the HVAC and taken away and filtered and done all that. No, it, it lingers for a while. And you know that because of the certain smells that you see in an elementary school and the yeah. things that happen in an elementary school. So you know that it's not like the you know hospital HVAC unit you know on the top of that thing. So yeah, where am I gonna eat food? Wow. That, I can Something see, I I, you know, I might set right up, I have, a, I have a side room in my room, a little side room. I'm going to think of having like a UV light aim down with fans. And so <laughs> you get under the UV light, have the fan kind of like clear off at least whatever's gotten on you. UV light will kill something as well. And then you eat yeah. out of that, basically. So yeah. you can join me. Well, just, we'll have gloves. We'll put gloves on. So the food <laughs> right? put in our mouths will be through gloves. I actually have a UV light in my room right now for the uh, for like a light experiment, you know, light and wavelengths. <laughs> yeah. So yep, let's put it Pass to work. It over your head. It's just it's unfortunate, <laughs> but that's the things we have to worry about. I mean, and this they is always, like, we joke about it because it's our life. It's what we're looking at. It's what we're you know, yeah. you know, you it's you got to have a sense of humor and everything too. But like, it's a serious stuff. But yeah, it's this is what we're gonna do. We're it's gonna do the unseen. best we can. It's unseen. That's the the worst thing. It's an unseen thing. And, yeah. you know, we, we mentioned, you know, in this episode, we talked about something in space that, that is really interesting and, and kind of brought it into, Hey, the world is constantly changing. It, it's things just because you're, it seems like your life might be changing a lot. It doesn't mean the rest of the world is like waiting still. It takes, might take a lot of longer time for that thing to change, but everything is changing. And if we can think of health and wellness we don't, we could change a lot more gracefully because we are going to change. We are going to age. Unfortunately, hopefully we don't have to die, but you know, it's right now. There's no one who's lived <laughs> to, to not, there's no one yeah. who's lived past that. And we all want it. We, there's people with a lot more money, a lot more science at their, at the helm than we have. And I don't know. Yep. They're, they're not telling us what's happening. 
but maybe we're not looking into that. But, you know, take care of yourself as much as you possibly can. Uh, make yourself healthy. Keep your immune system up. There's no, there's no one right way to do it. It's just the fact that your body is amazing. It has 200 million years of evolution behind it. There's, it reacts a certain way because it's, it's evolved to react that way. And there's been a lot of things that you've been susceptible to that you didn't get because your body has evolved so that it can survive that. We don't go outside and, and die just from breathing in the right. air. We can survive. So that's great. Okay. Let and your on body a scientific keep doing level, its thing. And on a scientific level, oxygen is poison, yep. by the way. Oxygen is poison. And if aliens ever come to this, this uh, earth, they're going to look down and be like, they're swimming and of all of all things, oxygen, this terrible yeah. thing, oxidation is, is one of the most destructive forces of nature. And we just swim in it. It is inside of our cells. Our own metabolism is oxidation. Like little, like if you could take a, a flame and, and take a little tiny piece of it, like a, a you know, a modicum or whatever yeah. of it, that's what's in our, our actual cells. Our metabolism is just a little, little bit of fire, not quite actual flame fire because it's on the molecular level yeah. but it is oxidation the exact same uh thing as fire um it's crazy it's destructive though it really is and and i think that's one of the reasons why we age um can't wait to dive into some more of this health stuff but yeah basically in the end just take care of your body pay attention to what you're putting inside of it you are what you eat and, and trust uh, trust your body because your body knows more than you do your body true. and I, yeah. I don't know why i i i have to like Everything has to be distilled down to that. Your body knows more than you do. Your body's taking care of you. Are you taking care of your body? Your right. body's going to work with whatever you give it because it, it, it can't control what you eat. But if you're eating Doritos for your only meal that the end of the day, your body's like, you haven't given me a lot of stuff to work with. I'm going to work with what you gave me because this is what I do. And I might have to like enact something else, you know, to kind of to make ends meet. Please don't do this again. Please eat more whole foods so I can, I can do all my processes and not strain certain things that might cause you issues when you're a little bit older so you can't wake up in the morning or, or get up or, or urinate properly. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And that's, you want to catch last up. longer. Things, there's mm -hmm. nothing worse than being sick, but, and, and being sick from something that you could have completely not had, you know, something that Absolutely. you could have controlled. And I guess that it's the same thing with COVID-19. I mean, yeah, wear a mask, you know. Wash your hands, do what you can. Wear a mask, <laughs> please. Put something, you know, go if you're shopping, yeah. please be safe. Take Don't care do of the usual other. thing. Don't do the usual thing and just ship your kid off to school with some Tylenol in its system to keep that fever down. You know, like, you know, you got to go to school, man. You got to go to school. Don't yeah. do that, okay? This is not the year for that. <laughs> If they're sick, you got to keep and them home. And they're going to probably trace it back to someone anyway. So there might be eventually some laws or something, some repercussions for people who do that too. We'll, we'll be talking about all of these things in perpetuity, you know, just because we're going to be living through it in a little bit. And we'll be uh, recording, doing our podcast as we are experiencing what it's like to teach in a pandemic. Yeah. I'm scared about that, but... Oh, I guess it's a good way to, to wrap up. Hopefully on a good yeah. note. Okay, yay. yay. All right. <laughs> well, uh, it's been another nice one. Uh, thank you. Yep. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, we'll, we'll have a studio someday yeah, where I we know. don't have to do this whole thing. And, you know, the, the two seconds or so that we're, we're trying not to talk over each other in, in person, we can actually nail the intro and the outro at the nice. same time, you know, and so I'm looking forward to our studio days. With a huge like UV light above us, just, just in case, because <laughs> yeah. in the future, just want to make sure we're all good all the time. Well, I'm Mr. That's James. Right. <laughs> I'm Mr. James. And I'm Mr. Richie. And we are, we are the, the Educators. educators. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Good night.